three, two, one. Of our manned spacecraft, that report here 
passed on by flight dynamics. The range safety officer, we understand, says we are flying low with the Gina and make them in. We have a report now of second stage ignition. Second stage of mission coming at a time some 20 seconds after second stage should have been cutting off. That reported Seco was second stage cut off, not ignition. These are very confused reports coming out of Houston. And Gina advises we have had Seco, the burner engine cut off, and separation. Here in mission control, our bump boards. Give us the data that we need to report to you. We are now five minutes and 50 seconds into the mission. At this point, the Agena is uh, well down range, and as a matter of fact, uh, the Agena primary propulsion system burn is still coming 10 seconds from now. That's a critical point at which we lost the Agena on uh, Gemini 6, you remember, when there was an explosion. This is very confusing. We do not have to do this. Six minutes, 20 seconds. We still have no actual word on the condition of our bird. At this point, uh, we're 10 seconds beyond the point we should have been had that Agena primary propulsion system burn 16,000 pounds. Plus. Plus 6 minutes, 30 seconds. We still have no definite word on the condition of our bird. The data on our blackboards does not attempt or does not give us uh, the figures we need to read out. very puzzling how the range safety officer could have uh, permitted the flight to continue. Bill Schneider said that we do not have any definite word on our bird, but it does not look good at this time. Six minutes, coming up on seven minutes into the flight. If, uh, by some great misfortune, we have lost this Agena, uh, then this mission, the manned mission of Germany 9, will be postponed for at least two weeks after which they will put up a augmented target adapter, so-called, which is a considerably modified Agena. It has all of the rendezvous capabilities. Plus but seven minutes and 30 seconds, and still no word, no definite word on the condition of Agena. As reported previously, our platforms here at Mission Control do not give us figures we need to read out this flight. Our mission director, William Schneider, says that we do not at this time know the condition of the bird. He added that does not look good. This augmented target adapter that they'll put up in a couple of weeks, if it turns out that the gene is not T plus eight minutes, uh, going into orbit in orbit uh, on this flight, uh, does not have a, a zone propulsion system, so one of the major maneuvers planned for Gemini 9 could not be performed, and that is the burn of the Agena thrusters while they're docked with the Gemini. However, the spacewalk and the other portions of the flight could be carried out. It certainly doesn't look good. At this time, uh, with no reports, uh, after booster engine cutoff, it would certainly sound as if something happened at that time. What is mystifying is that if the rain safety officer had a similar lack of detail, uh, would he have permitted this flight to continue without ordering a disability control? Eight minutes and 47 seconds into the mission. We do not know exactly what happened to the Agena, but the word now is that we have lost it. We do not know where it would come in. It evidently happened at staging, according to our mission director, Bill Schneider. We repeat, we evidently have lost the Agena vehicle. It appears that it has come in or is on its way in somewhere. It did not make it into orbit, and we have lost it. And we are standing by for additional word to see what will happen to the remainder of this flight. That is the flight concerned with the Gemini spacecraft. This As you can see, uh, we are showing nine minutes and 35 seconds since the Agena did lift off at Cape Kennedy. We have lost the bird. This is Gemini Control. Uh, you are seeing there a simulation of the mission uh, as if it were going well uh, on that map. Uh, obviously.
obviously uh, Gene is not there where it shows. Apparently, at least there is no report of that, as you just heard from Al Chop, the voice of Mission Control in Houston. The failure apparently occurred at boost range and cutoff, or at which uh, is the same moment when the sustainer engine cuts in. Uh, on this uh, Atlas, uh, there are three engines, the two main outboard booster engines, uh, developed some 330,000 pounds of thrust, enough to get the uh, rocket out of 28 seconds after the Agena lift, lift off. We have lost the Agena bird. Our mission director, Bill Schneider, has scrubbed the entire mission. Gemini 9 will not fly today. We will now attempt to get an evaluation of exactly what happened, and after that is determined, we will then, of course, look into plans for completion of Gemini 9 at a later date. As of right now, this mission is scrubbed entirely, both the Agena mission, because we lost the bird, and therefore our mission director, Bill Snyder, has scrubbed the Gemini mission which was to rendezvous and dock with Agena. It is now 11 minutes, 18 seconds since the Agena lifted off. The problem will be looked into. It evidently happened sometime during staging of the Agena. And our flight controllers will attempt now to get a handle on the situation, find out what happened, and then make plans for a future date. This is Gemini Control, 11 minutes, 41 seconds, since Regina licked it off. The last uh, Atlas uh, lost was on July 12th, uh, 1965, when something similar to this happened. It was at launch from Vandenberg Air Base out on the uh, West Coast, and uh, that failed at separation uh, also. The... Uh, uh, the, the, this one failed apparently two minutes and 11 seconds into the flight when the booster engines were supposed to cut off, the sustainer engines cut in. And that was the point at which the Gemini, uh, the Agena, rather, was lost. Nelson Benton, down there in Houston, uh, it must be a pretty sad moment at Mission Control, right? Well, though that uh, must be the truth, I think we could tell it in Al Chop's voice that there must be disappointment in Mission Control, located just a little ways from where we are, and of course, disappointment uh, at two homes near the Mission, uh, Mission Control Center, the homes of Tom Stafford and James Sinn. And I suppose the biggest disappointment is for the command pilot of Gemini 9 who sat on that pad last year and watched what at this point looks like the same thing happened once before and he's sitting down there with you now, Walter. Uh, yes, uh, Tom Stafford, of course, was Ronnie Shiraz's uh, pilot uh, when Gemini 6, uh, and they also were buttoned in uh, to the spacecraft. Uh, they heard the roar but could not see the takeoff of an Atlas and thought all was going well. Of course, that time the Atlas functioned perfectly, but when the Agena uh, propulsion system took over, uh, it uh, failed and the Agena uh, blew up. This time, apparently, the failure was in the Atlas, although, as you've heard, nobody really knows as yet. It did seem to happen, though, that certainly the loss of information began at uh, booster engine cutoff and the sustainer engines cut in. At that point, uh, the sustainer engines uh, start and carry on uh, for the next uh, several miles and the uh, next uh, several thousand mile increment in speed uh, for some two and a half minutes. As we said, the last failure of an Atlas was uh, something similar to this out of Vandenberg last July 12th, but there have been 284 Atlas launches, successful ones, from the Cape and Vandenberg. It is a workhorse of the space program, and certainly this is going to be a disappointment to those Atlas people. Uh, they will be putting another one up there on pad 14, just as fast as they can clear the pad uh, from the little bit of debris and damage that is always the result of a space shot, and then they'll put on top of that a augmented target adapter built by the McDonald people out in St. Louis, which will not have a propulsion system of its own, but can be put in a parking orbit, and uh, the rendezvous, docking, and the spacewalk parts of this flight can be carried out at that time. That will be, they have told us, uh, probably a couple of weeks from now. It has not been scheduled as yet.
Meanwhile, up at the 100-foot level uh, of pad 19, they're beginning to undo the hatches and take a disappointed Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan uh, from their spacecraft. Let's take another look at the launch of this Atlas that looked so good there just uh, some 15 minutes ago. Here it is. Perfect ignition. We have a liftoff, it looks like. 15 minutes and 4 seconds after the hour, we will get a refinement on that momentarily. T plus 10 seconds. At this, at this point, the uh, roll of the began and the pitch. They rolled the spacecraft just a little bit, then it disappeared in the cloud.